Okay, so this is like an hour long. I'm just gonna watch the classic part of it. They did, they, Blizzard, called WoWcast sometimes with Linksy and Devs, and they had a post BlizzCon Q and A. I haven't seen yet. Uh, I know it came out a couple days ago. I've been gone. I was I was in uh, Louisiana. I went to the LSU tailgate. But we're gonna watch uh, it. I'll let you know, guys know kind of what I think about it. Let's get to it. Let's jump into a Q and A with the classic team. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, I am Anna Resendez, one of the two lead software engineers in the World of Warcraft Classic team. I talked to Anna for like an hour. I'm Stone, associate production day. director on the WoW Classic I, team. I, I never met him yet. And I'm Tim Jones. I'm the Tim's assistant great. lead game designer on the World of Warcraft Classic team. Thank you for joining. Let's go straight into the All questions now. Our first question is from many players all around the world. Why didn't you announce Wrath Era Realms? Ooh, okay. You know, uh, we in the classic team is the moment where we're having the most offerings we have ever had in the past. You know, we get to have uh, the new season coming up, hardcore. Uh, you can also go to the classic era servers. Um, Grad of the Lich King, and then Grad of the Lich King is going to be moving into Cataclysm. So when Thinking about all these offerings that the classic team has at the moment, we were very conscious about not wanting to further fragment the, uh, the population and where people want to join into this journey. So we currently don't have plans to do so. That said, uh, on the technical side, when we implemented Burning Crusade and Breath of the Lich King, we were like super focused to make sure that whenever we want to bring those experiences again, it's going to be a uh, not such a hard time as it was the first time. Like we implemented it with in mind that it's gonna come back at some point. So I can talk about this a little bit. Uh, this is something that they've talked about nonstop since, uh, not nonstop, but uh, from the beginning of Classic being a thing, they said when they made Classic, they went back and they basically like, you, you basically had a WoW, retail WoW, and you have like layers of an onion, okay? And it's kind of like an ogre. Wow, it was like an ogre. No, so you have these layers to the game, and it's like you're peeling back layers, and you're like, okay, like Legion, you know, Mop, uh, or sorry, Legion, Mop, Wad, Mop, Cata, whatever. You're going down through the list until you get to vanilla. And um, they they made the game in a way to where it's like they were mostly working backwards to where it would not take nearly as long to make a TBC, to make a Wrath of Lich King, to make whatever they wanted as it did the first time whenever they made classic servers, which was vanilla. So this is something I've talked about quite a bit. I am a very, very big believer in the provision of classic WoW. And in my opinion, classic WoW is, is vanilla, Burning Crusade, and Wrath. So there's, I think there should be like a classic era server. There should be a Burning Crusade era server and there should be a Wrath Era server set, right? A realm list, whatever. And uh, I really hope that someday, like we get to that point where it's like you have vanilla, you have Burning Crusade, and you have Wrath, and you can play all of them, and all of them are, are done right. They're done well. So that's that's like my like something that I personally really, really strongly believe in. I think that WoW is such a big part of gaming history and uh, MMO history, right? Like it really kicked off like a whole generation of MMOs. And um, there's a reason for that. And I, I do think that a lot of the design elements, I, I think you have to account for the times a little bit, but like the core of what the game is, is good, right? It doesn't matter when it was made. It doesn't matter that it's 20 years old. It's good. And if it wasn't good at its core, then there wouldn't be so many people that have been playing it for years and so many people that have wanted, you know, classic for years, whether it's Burning Crusade, Vanilla, Wrath, whatever. So I, I, let's, I really strongly believe in, in the provision of Classic WoW, and I, and I hope that they do that someday. Our next question is from Makalak from the EU server of Ravencrest. Can you please share more specifically what is your current idea on the increased leveling speed from 1 to 80? Yeah, so you know, whenever we bring an expansion like Burning Crusade or Wrath Classic, and now Cataclysm Classic, we feel like we have a really good opportunity to sort of reframe that expansion, and that's sort of where the genesis for a lot of our hashtag some changes come from. And when we think about the leveling speed, we think about Cataclysm specifically, there's a renewed focus on Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor and that level 1 to 60 journey. Uh, that the level 60 to 80 journey being spent in Outland and in uh, Northrend uh, 
kind of doesn't feel like it's a part of. So what I would expect is for that level one to 60 journey with its hundreds of new quests, we expect a lot of players uh, to be there, um, either you know brand new players or returning players. Uh, and, and we might not make as many adjustments to that one to 60 portion, uh, although I will say we've been incredibly pleased with how well uh, Joyous Journeys mm -hmm. has been received every time that we've Joyous Journeys uh, been is able really to bring good. it back for Wrath. Really good it's idea. It's actually live right now in uh, Wrath Classic. So I would expect to see that uh, from time to time for that level one to 60 journey. Those of you guys who don't know what Joyous Journeys is, Joyous Journeys is, a, is an XP boost that they do seasonally. Like they'll like, hey, for a month or like six weeks or whatever, I, I don't know what's the longest period of time, but for some period of time, They'll be like, hey, here's a massive, like, you know, here, here's a massive XP buff so that people can level faster in Wrath of Lich King, in Wrath Classic. Uh, but the focus, I think, of, of our leveling changes there are really going to be focused yeah, it's 50%. on the Outland Sorry, I should have. Uh, experience clarified. before players return from Northrend at level 80 to complete their level 80 to 85 uh, journey um, in the main two continents of, uh, of Azeroth. Uh, so what I would expect to see. Um, just some uh, uh, experience increases there, similar to what you would see with Joyous Journeys. Uh, not to take away from any of the content um, in those level bands, uh, but certainly to get people a little bit quicker to that 80 to 85 um, portion once they, they reach that. Uh. So what do you guys think about that? I don't mind. I think that probably sounds good. It's, it's classic cataclysm and you're doing some things to kind of accelerate the process through through Outland, through Northrend. I think that the population of the game is a little bit different than, than it was originally whenever Cataclysm came out. And I think that adjusting the rate at which people gain XP or the amount of XP you need to level through those areas is, I, I think that's totally fine. It's probably a good idea so that people don't go through Cataclysm because I do think this will happen to some people. They might go through Cataclysm 1 through 60, and then you have this whole cool new leveling experience. Because I do actually, as much as I'm not a fan of Cataclysm, I, I have my gripes, I do think the leveling in Cataclysm was actually really good. If you go through and you go through this nice new leveling 1 through 60 of Cataclysm, and then you go from that to Outland, and then you go from Outland to Northrend, I think Outland and Northrend is going to feel like a slog for a lot of people. And giving them joyous journeys or something through those two portions, the, through those two expansions leveling, and then coming back to Cataclysm, 80 to 85, I think is going to be probably a good idea. However, this would be the concern. You go 1 through 60, and then you crank through the 60s, and you crank through the 70s, and then all of a sudden you go from 80 to 81, and you're just like, holy hell, this is a nightmare. That's the only like real sticking point that you're going to hit, but I think that a lot of people are going to hit that point. They're going to be like, damn, this sucks, but... I'm really close and I'm gonna to wanna to finish through it. There's also a chance that people hit that sticking point and they're just like, I don't got it in me no more and they quit. But I think if you've leveled all the way up, you probably are gonna play it out. We'll see what happens. Our next question is from Tom L on ATS server. What will be done to make guilds more accessible and useful in Cataclysm? Oh, this is a good question because yeah. there, there so was a lot is, of problems with guilds. This is another one where... So a lot of you guys know my history with WoW. I was basically vanilla, Burning Crusade. Wrath came out, I quit. Came back at the end of Wrath, quit again. And, uh, I got convinced to come back whenever Cataclysm came out. Some some old friends of mine were like, dude, come play with us. One of the things I noticed, I didn't raid at all in Cataclysm, and, and I and I just didn't, I just wanted to just PvP at the time. Uh, one of the things that I noticed is the development of everybody would try and join one guild, and you would have you everybody wanted to be in like this monster like mega guild. I had like led small guilds in the past. Like in Burning Crusade, I led a small guild and I eventually merged into a bigger guild, whatever. They transferred over called Combo Breaker, right? So some, some people transferred over to our server and then they merged with my guild and we made Combo Breaker together. Those kind of smaller communities, those smaller guilds kind of started to not exist. It was, it was like a huge disadvantage to be in a small guild because you didn't get these uh, the guild XP and the guild bonuses, whether it was like, you know, the, I think it was there was like a guild mailbox and all these kinds of stuff. This is a, a really good question for that reason. Look back at the original Cataclysm. Uh, there's two sort of components that we th we think about guilds from. Uh, one, making smaller guilds more viable or on more. Yeah, mass res is what I remember. Yeah, I don't remember a mass summon. Equal playing field as the larger guilds, uh, and then two, reducing some of the toxicity that was kind of introduced back then. Um, if we look at that one first, there was a guild perk that existed where uh, for however many members you had within your guild, 
every time that they would loot gold, the mm -hmm. guild would receive a portion or a percentage yeah. of mm. that. And so it basically then made it uh, uh, super impactful or important for a lot of guilds just to spam invites and try to get as many members as that's possible. Right. Um, I think that's certainly one area that we want to address. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other um, section on the smaller guilds, there are um, guild experience caps, uh, uh, both daily and weekly, and challenges that, uh, that players are being tasked with to overcome uh, on a weekly basis. And the larger guilds have a much easier time mm -hmm. being able to do that. Um, so I would expect that as we look at what we can do there, um, I would expect that uh, some of those challenges or experience gains or the ability to reach those uh, experience caps um, may be adjusted so that smaller guilds can participate in that and unlock some of the perks uh, on a more equal playing field as the, the larger guilds. How do you guys All think right, they should next question. How do you guys think they should do that? Um, like scaling like what you have to do per the amount of members in your guild. I feel like if you do that, it's it's going to make people not want to invite people to their guild that are not contributing, which could be a good thing. I don't know. It definitely changes the guild dynamic. Like I wouldn't want to just invite randoms or like people might not want to invite people's alts to the guild. They have like, oh, this is my alt guild, the guild that you have your main guild and then you have your alt guild that you don't want to do. Now, is it bad if you have an alt guild I know there's add-ons, right? Greenwall is, is, is the big one. But there's add-ons, there's things you can do to like merge the chats. But I don't know if it's a good idea to fracture the community of your guild when you make alt guilds and then they're not in the game. Cause not, you can't rely on an add-on. You can't be like, okay, well everybody's gonna have this add-on. The only way that works, I think, is if you add an alliance system. I you know, I, I've talked about Dark Age of Camelot before. Dark Age of Camelot had guild alliances. And then if your guilds were in an alliance, there was an alliance chat that you guys had, and that was essentially what Greenwall was. It was like a separate chat between the guilds. I think it's a lot more convoluted of a problem than, uh, okay, we'll just scale it based on guild size. Question is from okay. Awesome on the Paddle <laughs> server. Can we expect to see the return of the disenchantment button when items are being rolled out? Yeah, short answer, yes. Uh, we're playing on the window. Oh yeah, awesome. disenchant roll. Oh, that's a short answer. Yes. Nice. <laughs> yes. Can we do that? As simple as that. Yeah. Our next question is from Lilyberry on Grobula server. Is there any solution coming in Cata for the gear score meta making it impossible to gear up alts? Because I get constantly rejected by groups. Yeah, there's there's a lot of content that was constantly rejected by groups. Mm. This right here, by the way, this question, this was the reason that I quit. Wrath of the Lich King whenever I came back. In original Burning Crusade, I was I was the top rated rep paladin, alliance side, in my battle group in season three. I was I was well known everything. Wrath came out, a lot of people I knew quit the game. I come back towards the end of Wrath. I don't know anybody. I was like well known on the server. Like I was like involved on, on Alliance Kelthazad, uh on in Burning Crusade. I come back. And I don't know anybody. Trade chat is flying 100 miles an hour with like icons and stuff in chat. Spam everywhere. Insane spam. And it, just, it felt like a whole different game. And people are like, oh, your gear score is too low. We won't invite you. Link the Chiefs, bro. Bro, link your Chiefs. You want to join, join our pug? Link the Chiefs. And I'm like, dude, I'm new. Used to play a lot. I raided, I PvP'd, I did everything. But I'm new to Wrath. And I could not get invited to anything. And it caused me to quit again. So this is, a, this is a real problem that WoW has now had for years with the introduction of gear score. But the reason why gear score was introduced in the first place is because over the years in vanilla, Burning Crusade, Wrath, what happened to gear? The gear got better and better and it got more optimized because the players learned what was good. And as the players learned what was good, Blizzard sees player behavior and they're like, okay, well let's promote this player behavior because that's what they want to do. This is the emergent behavior of the game. Like, People want to wear the best gear. They want to wear the most optimized gear. So we're going to provide more more well-optimized gear for the different specs. This leads to being able to take all your gear and to reduce it down into one number because it's got a certain amount of itemization points and everything has a certain amount of stamina. Everything has a certain strength. Everything has a certain intellect. Everything has a certain amount of spell power, whatever it is, different ratings. So because it gets more optimized, it's very easy to be like, this guy's gear score is higher. He has better gear. Or this was a huge reason why I quit whenever I came back at the end of Wrath. I'm very curious to see how they answer this. 
and making it impossible to gear up alts because I get constantly rejected by groups. Yeah, there's there's a lot of content that was both part of Wrath of Lich King Classic, like the Titan Rune dungeon system. Um, it really allowed players to continue to explore dungeon groups now through the random dungeon finder. Um, there's more ease for players to get into that and find groups easily um, and really get the items that you need to be able to, to eventually jump into raids. I have a question. Wrath players, was the introduction of the random dungeon finder net positive or was it not good? Because originally people didn't want it. I know I didn't want it. But do you guys like it now? Because it, it was... That was something that Random Dungeon Finder, like a lot of people for years, like were like, this is not good. That and then LFR. But people felt more strongly about LFR than Dungeon Finder. So you guys like it now. Wrath is retail light, so yes, it was good. Okay. Nobody says a thing in dungeons anymore. It's like retail? Really? Get the items that you need to be able to... To heroic eventually jump into raids. Wait, this is actually good insight. The creation of Heroic Plus made Random Dungeon Finder more necessary. Okay. And Heroic Plus is something new. Really get the items that you need to be able to, to eventually jump into raids. Yeah, and this is something that we're going to keep monitoring towards, you know, not, not just when Cataclysm starts, but also uh, when the pre-patch comes in and a lot of people might be coming back to the game and trying to experience all like all the content. So we're going to be looking into it and making sure that we're always on the looks of finding ways that it could potentially ease that. Like as Tim mentioned, the Titan Rune Dungeons is kind of an idea of that. And there's always like different steps to get there. Um, we, we know that Titan Rune Dungeons, we acknowledge that they might be a little bit of a, a steep step for uh, a newer character, so you can always start, you know, your journey going into normal dungeons or the heroic versions eventually or through PvP and getting some gear so you're ready for those catch-up mechanics that we have, like the Titan Rune dungeons. Uh, that will be coming into Cataclysm um, in, a, in a different form. Our next question comes from Sageman1923 on the Classic WoW subreddit. <laughs> she said, she said Sageman. Our next question comes from Sageman1923 on the Classic WoW subreddit. Could we possibly get a roadmap of the future level caps? Yeah, so Season of Discovery uh, and the level caps. Um, I guess just to recap sort of Sage. what those, those level caps are, we're starting at level 25. Uh, after level 25, uh, we're going to raise the level cap to 40, we're going to raise it to 50, and then we're going to raise it to 60, and of course have all of the end game content after 60. I cannot stress enough how, like, it, this is just, it's such a good idea. I, I absolutely love that they are treating this like they treated the WoW Classic Beta. Season of Discovery is, I'm telling you, it's Classic Plus Beta. They're doing 25, 40, 50, 60. That's the beta. Guys, guess what? Season of Discovery was great, wasn't it? How about Classic Plus, or whatever they want to call it, you know, They'll probably call it, the, you know, Season of Mastery, Season of Discovery, and then Season of, I don't know, ex, ex, Exploration. I have no idea. I have, I have literally no idea what they'll call it, right? But I think they'll come up with Season of Blank to be a Classic Plus. Season of Plus. Season of Dynasty. I don't know. Whatever it is. I think that this is such a smart idea. This is something that is so good because if you look at what they did in the Classic Beta, not only does this create new metas and it's just super, super fun, unbelievably fun. A lot of people look back on the level 30 beta as like a, a very, very positive experience. A lot of people look at the level 40 beta as a positive experience. I think if you go through at level 25, 40, 50, 60, Really, I mean 50, right? And then obviously 60. But but really what I'm looking at is 25, 40, 50. You are going to be having people that are going to try and push the game. Put, like they're going to limit test. They're going to push the limits of everything you can do at that level. And it's going to be really fun to watch, right? Trying to run, you know, Scarlet Monastery stuff at level 25. You know, level 50, trying to run level 60 dungeons at level 50 is going to be sick. People are going to try and run level 60 dungeons at level 50, and it's going to be so badass. I, I know I will. I 100% will. That's going to be so cool. But anyway, let's continue. Uh, when, I talk, when we think about um, the timing for those, uh, 
we're not ready just yet to say when they're coming. Um, there's, there's an element of flexibility in there that we want to be able to maintain. Part of the uh, inspiration for this was back when the original classic beta was live uh, prior to its launch in 2019. It was so cool to see the new metas uh, that developed and what an end game at level 30 or level 40, I think it was where the two level caps that we used, yes. what that looked like. So when we think about uh, the Bingo. roadmap and the timetable for when we'll be increasing these level caps for I'm, I'm so glad that they said that. We really want to give enough time for that Hit meta the nail to on the develop head. and for players to be able to experience that end game at each of these uh, level caps. So it, you, you won't have to wait too long, uh, but we want to give it a little bit more time to see, you know, how the the first I think, one. At level I think it'll be four to six uh, weeks. Performs and I expect it to be four to six for, weeks for when we want to start moving on to the to the next ones. Our next question. I have something else. I love that they're doing mid-level content. If you guys watched some of my, my, if you either watched my video or you saw me talk about it on stream before, I, that's one of the things I asked for. I was like, I really hope they do mid-level content because Vanilla WoW is from level one to 60. And that's something that's very exclusive to Vanilla that, that doesn't really apply as much to a Burning Crusade Wrath and so on. I was very, very, very happy that, uh, that they decided to, to approach the game that way. And they were like, look, let's do that. Let's give them a mid-level raid. Let's give them multiple mid-level raids. I would expect one at 25, 40, and 50 at this point, which is cool. Sick. From today on the Chrome Crush server. Will content from previous level caps remain relevant from chapter to chapter as the level cap is increased? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the beauty of making level up content is that we're, we're adding new things to the, to the outdoor world. Um, and even as phases progress- to the outdoor and, world. And people jump in that didn't, that weren't playing in phase one or people making alts because they can't wait to see what kind of runes that other classes have to offer. Um, they're gonna be leveling through um, Azeroth again and um, the new content, the new rune discoveries that we added to zones all throughout the world people get to experience that. So that will definitely be relevant content to the level up experience all throughout um, the lifespan of Season of Discovery. We also hope that the uh, content like our level up raids, that people feel comfortable incorporating those into their, their level up journeys. Mm -hmm. So if you're in phase two or beyond and you can get a group together in your mid, mid 20s, then why not run Black Fathom Deeps a couple times um, get a couple great pieces of gear and, and use that to help level yourself up. Get one of those, those like new items that we're creating. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. I mean, this is something that people had hoped for, but I don't think it was confirmed yet. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, Tim mentioned changing things in the outdoor world, which would mean he, that they maybe are going to unlock certain areas of the game that were hidden. Because I think when you say talk about changing things in like the world or like the, I mean there's there's the outdoor world and there's like instanced areas of the game right like BFD is an instanced area. He's either talking about things like the Ashen Vale PvP stuff. Like, are they going to change the terrain? Like, do they? I, I still don't have the answer to this. Is there a level designer on the classic team? Is there somebody whose job it is to actually like shape the world or like a, like add stuff or build things out? Or are they just talking about like? you know, runes or like different different things that they're adding in the world, like like the Ashenvale PvP event. I don't know. That would be sick if they had a if they had a level designer whose job it was to work on some classic stuff. One of those like new items that we're creating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now the, the that's actually a really good point. At the in the beta at BlizzCon, that area was walled off, but that might have just been something for the beta. Like that doesn't mean like that, I don't think it's gonna look like that in the game at all. I think that's just a, a specific thing they did for the beta. So I don't know if they'll they have somebody that's doing that. So I don't know. Who knows? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Our next question is from Malzar with the guild Jolly Roger. They ask, is it reasonable to assume that classic raids will eventually come to Season of Discovery as well, such as being able to acquire Atiash? Yeah. So yes. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so many of those raids are um, so iconic. We, we Wait a second. Hold on. Discovery as well, such as being able to acquire Atiash? Yeah. So yes. This guy has perfect teeth. Like, how does this guy's teeth get so good? What the heck? Any of those that's impressive. Are, um, so iconic. We, we absolutely want that's to like, Yeah, that's that. like S-tier genetics. I think at this point, 
thinking money, about money smile, yeah. every twist on everything. Uh, it's possible that they could also come with some changes. Uh, when we think about that, we think about some of the work that we did on Season of Mastery as kind of being within the realm of, uh, of adjustments or additions that we might make to them. Um, but on the flip side, we're, we're still discussing it. And we recognize that characters, players' characters that'll be coming to each of these are gonna have access to mm -hmm. tons of new abilities. Um, and that's kind of going to bring a fresh spin on these raids uh, as they exist without any uh, changes or additions. Um, so something that we're still uh, in discussion on, but the raids will absolutely be there. You know what I hope? I mean, they, they talk about getting on Tish and getting the raids. I guess, of course. Like, all, all that's going to exist in Season of Discovery over time. I really, really hope. Oh, what the heck? Okay, that literally the next question. I was gonna say this. I really hope that they add a quest line or something. They finish the quest line to uncorrupt the Ashbringer. I want that so bad. I so badly want that, dude. Because if you go and you can see it, I have an old YouTube video from like three years ago maybe, but it's whenever I got my corrupted Ashbringer, I went to Scarlet Monastery and I and I did the event. I did the Scarlet Monastery event where they're friendly with you because you're, oh my gosh, it's the Ashbringer, right? And then you go and there's an RP event with Mograine and all kinds of stuff. I want that to get fleshed out more and you complete a quest and you can take that corrupted Ashbringer and you can cleanse it and make it uncorrupted. That would be amazing. I, I, I want that so unbelievably, like it's gotta be tough, it's gotta be hard, but I want that so bad. Maldazar has a second question and they ask, are there any plans to introduce any new legendary items for Season of Discovery, such as the original Ashbringer or Frostmourne? Um, it's a big maybe, you know, <laughs> I think we're, we're so excited to explore sort of the the unfinished storylines mm. or, or quests that abruptly ended, like what's behind the gates of Timber Ma Hold in Ashara, or oh. why does the quest line for the the Shade of Aranicus gem abruptly end in Winter Spring? Um, we're super excited to explore um, um, continuing those those storylines or or quests when it's oh, appropriate and, just, and come when, on Tim um, just say yes it damn it Tim full of content that was eventually explored in come on come on just just say yes come Our next on question man comes from Sir Thunder Thunder Thunder. Thunder. dude what are you He's like, look, we're excited to potentially explore. Damn it, Tim, just say yes. <laughs> you tease, damn it. And, um, <laughs> it is respectful of I want it so bad, dude. I want Ashbringer so bad. Expansions. Our next question comes from Sir Thunderpaws on the Classic WoW subreddit. What are you going to do to address gold inflation, gold buying, and botting? Yeah, uh, so um, this kind of activity uh, and the impact that uh, it has is incredibly important to us. Um, not just as, as developers of the game, but also as players of the game, ourself. Uh, so it's something that, uh, yeah. as developers of the game, but also as players of the game, ourself. Uh, so it's something that the, the team is um, incredibly focused on, uh, uh, almost nonstop. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we think about this, um, and we think about the, the tools that we have at our disposal, uh, it gets challenging to get into specifics on it because the more that we talk about it and the more that we talk about uh, how we work on this. Oh, or, it gives them the more areas, ways to get around uh, it. That we, that we work on to, to help address it, uh, the more self-defeating it can become right. uh, because of that level of insight that we're giving into it. Um, so I would say uh, that I'm, I'm sure some players have noticed the occasional instance where uh, an instance might close for <laughs> a little bit uh, with not very much warning uh, and then may reopen. Um, those could be areas where some of our team are making some changes uh, due to some oh. activity that we've seen uh, in those spaces. I think part of the challenge really is that communication uh, problem that we come across. Uh, we're trying to find ways to be more communicative about our efforts. One of the things that we started doing several months ago is working with our community team to post the uh, monthly number of accounts that have been actioned uh, to kind of give some of that visibility into the work that our team and our partner teams are doing in this area. Uh, I think bottom line, we, we recognize that this is a battle 
uh, and we recognize that it's a battle that's that's not going to stop. Uh, but we are up to the challenge. This is one that we are not going to stop fighting. Uh, the team is committed to it. Our partner teams are committed to it, and we're going to use all the tools at our disposal and our evolving tactics uh, to continue addressing it. Yeah, I mean, in the technical side of things, we're always looking into different options on how to increase, uh, you know, all of the code and like the systems that we have in place and. Uh, like it, it's always part of like our tasks uh, that we always are looking into and we work really closely with you know the modern side of the game too because um, to kind of have a concrete and like unified front into this battle I think we all know it it they, they kind of have to give like a canned like default answer there because I mean like you said he's like he literally said before he gave it he's like look we can't really talk about how it works because if we talk about how it works then the people that are building the bots know how it doesn't work and then how it if you know how it doesn't work then you can basically like reverse engineer their answer to figure out how to circumvent their methods you know it, i do think it's a lot more compli complicated than people think it is i've worked for a few companies that have dealt with spammers and bots i've always had to sign an extra more strict nda to not talk about how we deal with them yeah, it makes sense it's like the missile knowing where it isn't yeah exactly i think everybody knows it and everybody feels it, there needs to be a, a stronger push towards stopping the bots. I don't think it comes from a lack of effort. I think it comes from a lack of resources because Blizzard today is not like how they used to be where they had a bunch of like GMs on staff. They had a bunch of like a, tons of employees and they had like actual like real life GMs going through and constantly working through tickets. It just doesn't, it doesn't work anymore trying to have somebody go through and do it because that's not how like up top they're doing things. So it's like, oh, we'll just hire more people. Well, that's not these guys' decision. That's not the classic team's decision. That's the people, the people that write the checks for those people also write the checks for these people and those people have to make the decision that they want to do that. That's, and that's just the truth, right? Like that's, that's how any, any sort of big company works and it, it just sucks because then who, who gets the blame for it? Who gets the flack for it? It's these guys. Our next question comes from the BG Hero on the Classic WoW subreddit. How do you plan to balance factions for world PvP and season of discovery? Yeah, uh, so this is this is a fun one. Um, I, I want to start start uh, kind of just talking about servers for or realms for a second. Uh, I don't think a lot of players realize because we've we've only talked about it once or twice uh, publicly, but when we were developing hardcore realms. Uh, we were actually able to develop uh, quite a bit of technology and new methods to raise the uh, realm caps for the number of concurrent players that we can have connected to a single realm at a time, quite substantially. Uh, so when you look at the number of realms that we launched with on Hardcore, it may seem like there's only a couple, but they can actually hold a far greater number of uh, players at a single time than we had ever previously been able to achieve on uh, previous uh, classic realms. Um, so that's certainly something that, that we want to employ when it comes to Season of Discovery. It's kind of like we want to do as few realms as possible uh, while still being able to, to get everybody in who wants to play. Um, now that being said, I'm also not an engineer, so <laughs> Anna, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about that or, or about the PvP side of things and how that's going to... Yeah, I mean, we hope that with these, uh, the population kind of regulates a little bit more, knowing that like with less options to choose from, uh, we have seen these in data before, right? When there's not as many servers to choose from from the beginning, kind of like the factions start balancing a little bit more. Um, so that's our hope with all these improvements that we're doing. Um, the other thing too is hmm. that the World PvP event that it's currently being developed, um, well, actually, it's ready to go <laughs> for uh, level 25. Uh, it actually doesn't start <laughs> like, oh, until both ready. factions get to a certain threshold. Mm. Uh, so we're hoping that when the event starts, it's going to be at a balanced place and a ba balanced battle. And of course, we're going to be keeping an eye, a close eye on it and just making sure, like, hey, is this working? Do we need to do any adjustments to the world PvP uh, event uh, that might you know, help that balance and keep that balance hmm. and making it fun, right? Like, because we mm -hmm. want it to be fun. Um, so, yeah, we're 
kind of like keeping an eye on the server population, plus also the new events and all of those kind of things, uh, 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 keeping the faction balancing. I'll tell you, I don't think it'll ever work anymore, but man, there was something special. You can ask anybody who's a, who's a private server Andy, okay? You, you ask me, you ask, you know, Guzu, you ask Stay Safe, whoever, and they will all tell you there was something special about having one global server and and everybody who was in EU and everybody who was in NA played on that one server and it was alive 24-7, this one mega server. World was alive 24-7. You could get on middle of the night, there's people running around. There's, there's always something to do. There's always PvP. It was so special. And I, I just wish there was a way you could do something like that, but I just... I think that Classic now is so big. It's not like a private server. We would have like 10, 10 to 15K people on like max, right? Like like peak was, I don't know what the peak was on like Lights Hope, but I remember when we were like getting like 13, 14, 15K and we were like, holy, like what? This is insane, right? That's peanuts compared to what they deal with on like the official servers now. I mean, you, 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 you probably have, I, I mean, it's in the millions, right? Of, of people playing Classic now. It's way the hell more people than we can imagine. I wish we could have something like that where you wouldn't have layered PvP. And, and I, I don't know if it's reasonable. I think it might just be a complete nightmare if they, if they even tried. But they did increase the max number of players at a time. She said that. And that's something we saw at the beginning of Classic launch that was terrible, dude. The problems with the server stability. Now, if I'm correct, and a lot of people have brought that up. They're like, is it going to be that laggy again? Somebody correct me because I haven't played a whole lot of ERA after they made the changes, like getting rid of batching and this and that, is it true that they found out after they got rid of batching that in the large scale battles, batching is what was like snowballing the, the latency and the lag problems out of control because the batch was so big at 400 milliseconds that it was making things like exponentially laggy. So now it's like not nearly as laggy as it used to be with like, you'd have like a hundred, 200 person battle and it would still lag a little bit, but it wouldn't be anywhere close to what it was. Is that true? Can somebody confirm that? Cause th I've heard that from multiple people. Yes. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm very excited for the action bill PVP. Don't mind. I look forward to watching those streams on that world PVP. Event. Yeah, yeah it's going to be fun. <laughs> and that's like what's so much fun about uh, classic is that it's like, I, I think of PVP in classic uh, as being like world PvP and those like epic battles with a with a bunch of people out there in the world. So I, it's been it's gonna be really fun. Very excited. <laughs> Our next question comes from Arithma from the Guild After Dark. Are there any plans to buff and or tune both instance and open world content to make up for the large number of buffs coming to every class? Uh, uh, yes, absolutely. They, they talked um, about this. You know, we want the world of classic to feel. Um, both exciting and World challenging to players, and especially as we're adding new content to the open world, really encouraging people to go into all the nooks and crannies of different zones looking for these new runes. Um, <clears throat> players are going to get a decent amount of power from those runes, and so we want to not one-to-one -one counterbalance um, the the difficulty of outdoor content. We, we want players to feel an increase in power, but we, we within reason. Um, so where it's appropriate, we have the power to um, adjust the HP and the damage of, of creatures in the outdoor world. Now as for tuning of, of our raids, we also want our raids to be challenging. Um, we also want them to be approachable, but uh, especially for, for rewards, we want to make really cool items and rewards for people to, to be excited about and go after in these dungeons. And so we want the challenge of the bosses um, to reflect the power of the rewards that we're handing out. <laughs> <laughs> Our next question comes from Roar G90 on the WoW Classic subreddit. Is there a possibility uh, we can see two-handed enhancement shaman viable as DPS? Okay. Um, you know, the, the modifications necessary to make both, um, there's a lot of modifications necessary to make both two-handed enhancement shamans and um, dual wield enhancement shamans viable. Uh, for Season of Discovery in particular, we've focused more on modeling after the Burning Crusade version of enhancement shaman. Um, so the, we're keying off of runes like Lava Lash and um, dual wield specialization. 
Um, to get two-handed enhancement shaman working properly, we'd probably have to add like a fifth rune to um, some of the armor slots to make that work. You know, that's not in our plans currently, um, but it's an intriguing possibility. And I, I want to try know, and talk to them about this. We're always listening to feedback of our players, so if that's something that players are passionate about and want, please tell us. I, I, that, that's something I, I, I'm, I'm going to talk to them about whenever, whenever I get the chance to. Um, I know that's something that a lot of... Look, look, I, I, look, listen, there's a, there's a respect, there's a rivalry, but there's a mutual respect between the, the paladins and the shamans, okay? Where, like, my, 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 uh, my rivals, the enhancement shamans, opposite the rep paladins, look, at the end of the day, we both use two-handers, okay? And we both, look, we both have a lot of the same struggles. So I know... Uh, it's important to a lot of people that have kind of that, that vision of what an enhanced shaman is in vanilla. Uh, they have this, this feeling about like, Oh, like big two hander. I got a hand of rag, you know, I'm a, this orc shaman comes in, boom, slamming that big wind fury, all that stuff. Right. That's what I think a lot of vanilla enhanced players like, and a lot of vanilla enhanced players want to see. So, uh, I don't necessarily think it's a mistake uh, adding dual wield into vanilla for enhanced shaman. But I do think it is a mistake that if you decide to add dual wield, you do it at the cost of taking away the um, competitiveness as an option, making, making two hand, not making two handed uh, weapons, a competitive option to dual wield. I said that kind of weird, but I think you guys see what I'm saying. Uh, I think that a lot of people want that. I think that's what vanilla enhancement players want and uh, you have an opportunity here to kind of divert the path to, to <clears throat> something that 15, 16 years ago was changed. Hey, shamans are now dual wield. Well, you don't have to do that now. And you can give people the big two hand that they want. So we'll see what happens. Um, if it doesn't happen in the first phase of season of, season of discovery, maybe it'll happen on a later phase. But I, uh, that's something that I... I I, I feel strongly about that, and I don't even play. I don't even play an enhanced shaman, and I feel strongly about it because because I, I get it. I, I I get why people feel that way. So um, yeah, that's something I want to talk to them about. Oh, we will. <laughs> <laughs> Just you wait. Just you wait. Uh, <laughs> Our next question comes from Beth F on Senjin. Will there be a Scarlet Monastery raid? Ooh. Oh, just straight up. <laughs> um, you know the. The content that we mistakenly um, teased at, at BlizzCon, it really represents just a, a huge aspirations that we have on the Classic team. Um, you know, the, the treatment that we gave the Black Fathom Deeps raid, it, it represents um, just what we're willing to do to existing content. He didn't say no. He didn't say no. Let's go. He didn't say no. Um, I'm so excited for players <coughs> to be able to, to see our, our discoveries um, that they didn't get to see at the convention uh, or BlizzCon um, because they, they're really a great example of the, the level of detail and, and care and love that, that we're putting into making brand new content. And all of that to say... There is, there's, a, there's a deep desire among us on the Classic team to make brand new, never before seen um, yes! okay. raid content for Huge. Season of Discovery. Okay. Nothing to announce at this time, but... Um, so this goes excited. back to what I was saying earlier, man. This goes back to what I was saying earlier, talking about if there's a level designer on the team. I think this is a problem with a Scarlet Monastery raid, okay? A problem with a Scarlet Monastery raid is if you make a Scarlet Monastery raid, are they getting rid of, of BFD? Are they getting rid of BFD and, and making it, uh, sorry, as a dungeon and just making it a raid? Because if you do that, if you do that, then are you going to do the same thing with Scarlet Monastery? Because people are not going to want to lose what they have right now in the armory, in the cathedral, in the graveyard, and in the library. I think what people want is they want an additional instance that is a Scarlet Monastery raid. So, with what his answer is here, saying that he wants to make, and a lot of people on the Classic team, want to make new, never-before-seen content, right? Now, that could be something as simple as, like, how they did BFD as a raid, or it could mean 
they want to build out, you know, we see this part of Scar Scarlet Monastery. What if there's a whole backside of Scarlet Monastery that we don't even know yet? Do you have a level designer build out this, like, I mean, I almost said, like, whenever I first thought of, thought of it, it was, like, almost like, you know, Castle Nathry on retail? Kind of that sort of aesthetic, but paladin-themed instead of vampire-themed, right? So to where you're going into, like, this big, you know, Scarlet Monastery that's almost like a castle, right? Like a big castle church thing that's, like, deeper in the cathedral or something. I don't know, right? It, it probably... You have to make it look, like, classic. You shouldn't make it as, like clean and high resolution and all that stuff. Maybe, maybe I'm just kind of like being, th that's wishful thinking. But I would love to see them actually build out like the backside of Scarlet Monastery as, as the Scarlet Monastery raid and they don't touch the current dungeons, right? Unless you might add like a, an, a, a portal inside of each dungeon, like a, like a raid portal, like kind of like Molten Core BRD or, or BWL UBRS, right? If they add something like that, that, that could be cool. But I, I really think they should... I really hope that they can make a whole new world for, or a whole, a, whole, a whole new instance for it. That would be sick. But uh, that's a lot, so I don't know if they'll actually do that. There's nothing to announce at this time, but um, we're definitely excited and have big aspirations. Our next question comes from Felich on Kazakh. In Season of Discovery, will I be able to find runes that make Smite Holy Priest DPS viable, or is Holy Disc meant to be healers? Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the beauties of that could be cool. making smite priest like a thing. We've talked about that. Systems is that um, make sanctity are useful. The runes are not as specialized depending on what talents you choose. Um, so there's like certain runes that if you read about them, they're more like DPS focus, like homunculus. Um, and then there's other ones that are more healer based focus, like penance or. Uh, prayer of mending, right? Um, but the idea is that you can mix and match them all, right? So you can be a discipline priest or a holy priest and go and pick uh, the more on the shadowy side, on the DPS side, and there's nothing stopping you. So you can go and uh, I, I think that's cool. still heal with your with your abilities, but then also pick some of the DPS ones and still have the same ability as them. And on the opposite side too, right? If you're mm -hmm. playing a shadow priest. Maybe you also want to have a penance here and there and like play with it and maybe you're even Angel more thump. of a hybrid of a healer slash DPS. Cool. Our next question comes from Marcos from the guild. I hope that still, I hope that applies to some of the other specs and they look at, or some of the other classes and they can make like a Shockadin build for Paladins. I know a lot of Paladins like playing that, like support healer Shockadin build um, and, and building on that could be cool. Guild from the Ashes. I heard on a stream that with Season of Discovery, the sky is the limit. If so, what is the most radical change you'd be willing to implement? That's a great question, Marcos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we really want to double down on the philosophy of the world is the main character in Season of Discovery. Um, and, you know, the beauty of getting to work on level-banded content phases as a, as a designer is that we, we get to focus on one section of the game at, at a time as it's relevant to players while, while they're leveling up. Um, and whether that content, you know, manifests itself as outdoor world PvP or new world bosses, new rewards, new contests, um, we're gonna do our best to figure out where that content fits best within our new level banded content phases. Okay. Our next question comes from Viaprax on the EU server Storm Reaver. For the season server, will racials be rebalanced? You know, oh, good a, question. A question. You know, racials are incredibly important to you know solidifying the fantasy of of the character that you're playing. Whether you're a Tauren with War Stomp or an Undead with Will of the Forsaken, um, it it really defines um, your character. Um, but at, at the same time, we 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 know that a lot of people choose certain races because it's the optimal choice um and we know our classic players uh they love choosing the optimal choice so um with that said we're not going to do anything specifically to racials as they currently exist on characters however um some of the things that players rely on racials to do, certain um, stat, bonus, stat bonuses like weapon skill that orcs and humans get with axes and swords and maces. Um, this is we important. We aim to 
assist uh, with with where people have access to those stats through the rewards in our, our oh, level up that, raise. Okay, huge. This is a problem. I think he's talking about adding. I'm gonna let him finish. Sorry, I'm interrupting. Let me, just let, let me finish what he has to say. And discoveries that people um, find while leveling, um, so people won't feel forced to, you know, get the edge master's hand okay. cards. Okay, okay, that's um, literally words. okay. I'm I'm gonna interrupt because I, that, great. The weapon skill stats, <laughs> the weapon skill stats, and he, he hit the nail on the head where where he's edge master's hand guards. Like this stuff is too valuable. Because, and this is something going back years on private servers, people knew glancing blows were bad and people knew weapon skill was valuable. And that whenever Classic came out and people were running the numbers and doing the math, people realized like, oh, uh, actually weapon skill is even way more valuable than we thought it was on private servers. Um, like to a disgusting degree. Uh, like as a two-handed weapon user, talking about enhanced shamans and rep palette, as a two-handed weapon user, we don't have a lot of opportunities to, to get plus weapon skill and because we don't have those opportunities, we can't we can't negate glancing blows uh, at all. So using a two-handed in general is like a massive disadvantage because something like Edge Master's hand guards only applies to one-handed weapon skill, not the two-handed weapon skill. That's that's like a huge deal. Feel forced to you know get the Edge Master's hand guards um, in order to be viable if you chose the race that you want to play because you like their their racial abilities or you just like how they look. Um, you know, another topic on, on the point of, of racial abilities is priests. Um, oh, priests have priest. a wide variety of unique uh, racial abilities specific to their race and class. And, you know, one of the things that we haven't really gotten into details about in Season of Discovery are the rune acquisitions themselves and how some classes have some very unique uh, ceremony um, associated with um, learning their runes, and, and priests are one of those. They'll be encouraged to go into the world and um, learn about the, the religions and the faiths of the different races of Azeroth. And so this is not planned for the level 25 phase, oh, but wait, in what? future phases we're open to exploring, um, you know, priests perhaps getting access to the priest racials of, of, other, of other races um, in the journey of that religious exploration that they have to do. Wait, that's kind of cool. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I like that. So is that going to be something that you choose through a quest chain, or is it something that is going to be added, like, across across the board? Like, you can get Fear Board and Star Shards. So I wonder, what I, I think the idea from an RP standpoint sounds cool. Is that going to make it to where, I mean, here's the thing. It's like, oh, well, everybody's going to play human now. Well, everybody played dwarf. Everybody played dwarf before. Like the same people that were playing dwarf before are now just going to play human. So, does it matter? I think it's just something cool, but it doesn't actually change anything. They'll play night elf because hotter. <laughs> Do you think that means seals for pallies might be learned in a similar manner? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because uh, there's nothing specific to dwarf or human. Dwarf is bis because of how the braids twirl while casting. True. Let's continue. And this is from Tyranny533 on the Classic WoW subreddit. Will Season of Discovery end with server wipes like Season of Mastery, or will servers stay open for future content once the level 60 phase is out? Yeah, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're really excited to have the level content facing that we're, we're planning for Season of Discovery. So we're really hoping to get an idea of how players are interacting with the content through this, I mean, right now, it is a season, right? So it is set up to be temporary. We always guarantee you that you're gonna be able to keep the characters that you create one way or another. How that's gonna look, it's not solidified yet. We're still talking and we're gonna be seeing, as I mentioned, monitoring through all these phases, seeing how people are engaging, see what- Oh, wait, love that's the weird. Most. Um, so then we can find uh, these characters a place, right? Um, so. Keeping, keeping an eye on it, uh, we don't have final plans on it, uh, but we guarantee you that your character is gonna be able to go one one way or another. And of course, if there's like something that everybody just loves so much and they don't wanna see gone, we're definitely gonna talk about different options on how we can allow players to keep um, having the fun that they're having. Yeah. That ra So, okay, let's try and unpack that. You guys in chat are saying Classic Plus. 
if they do a classic plus, they would not want you to transfer your characters from a, a fully fleshed out season of discovery to a classic plus fresh. They wouldn't want that. If anything, I would say that that comment of like, oh, well, we want people to be able to keep their characters kind of takes away from my theory of it being a beta for Classic Plus. It would be the most Blizzard thing in the world to allow a season of Discovery full of fun and then move us to Aero Service in the rooms. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. It makes me think that there's going to be like a season of, of Discovery era server that's like stasis servers and they just stay there and then a classic plus comes off of it if this is not really the beta for classic plus and it just keeps continuing into what they consider to be a classic plus i was under the assumption that season discovery was going to happen you get to max level you do the next phase you get to max level what yada 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 right and it's over like it's going to be temporary it's going to be a season and then your characters are gone which kind of sucks but I was I personally was under the impression that this was I mean I'm treating this like a beta. I think a lot of people are going to treat this like a beta. So we'll see, man. I do not know. I I do not know how they're going to end up approaching that concept of you will get to keep your characters. And the answer to that lies in what they want to do long term with what Discovery is and what Classic is and what Era is. and Wraps up our Q&A session. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Um, I think that was great. I love that. I think, I think that was fantastic. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I, I can link the video as well. But, uh, any any kind of crumb that we can get before November 30th. I mean, you guys know me. I'm going to be full send. I'm I'm look, hey, I'm back. Okay? Wow is back, baby. I'm back, baby. I'm full send waving the classic flag like back in the day. I'm I'm all in. Okay? I'm I'm doing season of discovery. That doesn't mean I'm not doing my variety. That doesn't mean I'm not doing the sports stuff or the IRL or any of that, right? But that does mean that wow is back, baby. So, Yes. Um, November 30th. I'm excited. And any sort of crumb we can get, any sort of any sort of bits and, and any bits and pieces that we can get about season of discovery, I uh, I can't wait to find out more about it. So we got more coming. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. I hope uh, I kind of want to hear what you guys have to say about this. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about what I had to say? What are your guys' opinions on the uh, the answers that they had to the questions that they got? Uh, just let me know. Leave a comment below, uh, and and I I will do my best to push as much feedback as I can to people, and um, with with kind of the opportunity that that I have to talk to them. So uh, yeah, hope you guys like it. Uh, if you do like it, hit it with a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. We do everything here. I do everything on Twitch. Uh, join the Discord, subreddit, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Threads, YouTube, Twitch. Everything is SPN TV. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.